21st Precinct, Sergeant Burns. Shooting? Where? Well, who shot? And how do you know there's a shooting? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Well, who told you to call the police? You are in the muster room at the 21st Precinct. The nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right, wait there for the officers. Yeah, right there where you are. No, you don't have to call for an ambulance. I'll take care of it. You just wait there for the officers. Okay. Yeah. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my night tour, 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. At 11.15, I returned to the station house from patrol, and after signing the blotter, went directly to my office to read and approve a file folder of reports that had accumulated during the tour. I had also instructed the 124 man to post on the bulletin board the names of two patrolmen working the 12 to 8, informing them to see me on their arrival at the station house. Yes, come in. You want to see me, Captain? Oh, come in, Hanneman. Yes, sir. Close the door. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Captain. Hanneman, I got a 49 from the chief clerk concerning you today. Yes, sir. And after I got the 49, I asked to see the payroll sheet. Yes, sir. I just want to know how you do it. Do what, Captain? After deductions for federal withholding tax, the pension fund, the uniform loan account, health insurance, and the garnishment the chief clerk's office sent the 49 up about, the city will give you exactly $52.20 for half a month's pay. I'd like to know how you're going to live on that. I'd like to know, too, Captain. What's this garnishment about? Who'd you owe? Nobody, Captain. Well, you must have owed somebody, or they wouldn't have garnished your wages. I went co-signer on a note, Captain, for my brother-in-law, my sister's husband. And he defaulted? Yes, sir. Well, why did you let it get to court? The garnishment doesn't look good on your record. Well, sir, when I got served with the complaint, I called him up and he said, don't worry about it, he'd take care of it. He'd get it straightened out. So I didn't worry about it. Mm, you ought to see what a man's prospects are before you go on his note. My sister married him, Captain. I figured that was good enough. Excuse me? Yes, sir. 21st Precinct, Captain Kennelly. Yes, put him on, Sergeant. Oh, all right. Tell him to come right in. A $52.20 paycheck. You'll have to do better than that, Hanneman. Yes, sir, but uh, don't worry about me, Captain. You see, I'm single and living at home with my folks, so I'm not in too bad shape. Mm -hmm. You still have to do better. I expect to, Captain. This is my last month as a probationer, so I get more money there. Plus the fact I lost two days when I went sick in the seat, and my brother-in-law says he'll get the whole thing straightened out by next week. Well, at least I'm glad you're optimistic. There's nothing else I can be, Captain. The check couldn't get any lower, only higher. Well, see that it does. Get rid of that garnishment. Yes, sir. All right, get on the job. We've got to talk to the detective commander. Yes, sir. Thank you, Captain. Hello, Lieutenant King. Hanneman. Go ahead, Russ. Oh, yeah, thanks. Oh, come in, Matt. Shut the door, Hanneman. Yes, sir. Captain, you know acting Captain Russell Larkin was a safe and lost run. Oh, yeah, sure, isn't that? How are you, Larkin? Fine, Captain. Sit down. Uh, pull that chair over, man. Yes, sir. Well, what have you got, man? We think we've got a deal on 84th Street, Captain. Can you give us about six men? Right now? I hope soon, Captain. What is it, man? It's a safe and lost squad case, Captain. We just got in on it ourselves. Russ? Well, we've had these three box men under surveillance for more than two weeks, Captain. Two of my detectives made this one boy. His name is Eddie Dorkin. As he was walking on the street in the garment district a week ago Tuesday. I see. And they recognized him as a safe burglar and took out after him to see where he'd lead them. They kept him under surveillance all that day. Nothing. After he went home that night, I sent two more men to relieve them and instructed them to keep up the surveillance. Uh, Captain, this Eddie Dorkin is a pretty good boy. Just finished a bit and sing thing. Been up there since 1946. Mm -hmm. How many deals with he right in when you got him then, Russ? Well, we caught him in the act of burglary and, and he admitted to three more. 
So this time I figured we had something. I told him to stay with him. They did. All last week. Nothing. Last night he went to a bar down in Greenwich Village, Sullivan Street. He walked into the place and went right to a booth. There were two boys waiting in there. One of them we made right away. Philip Spriggio. We handled him before. The other one we don't have a complete line on yet. They call him Matt. And that's all we know about him until now. Three of them had a couple of beers apiece and sat and talked for nearly two hours. Well, uh, this Philip Spriggio, was he with Dawking on these deals in the 46th? No, no, Captain. The two boys who were with him then are still up there. But Spriggio was in while Dawkin was, and that's where they probably got together. Mm-hmm. And what's this deal on 84th Street? Uh, this afternoon, about 5 o'clock, they all three met again. This time in a bar on 86th Street. They had a beer and talked. Then they all left together. They walked around the corner and down to 84th. They stood across the street from this seven-story loft building. Must be Spriggio's job. He was talking, the others were listening. Everything seemed to be okay. So they walked toward Lexington Avenue and went down to the subway. On the train, one of the detectives got right up close to them. All they were talking was baseball. Dawkin got off at 14th Street, Spriggio and Mack rode on to Brooklyn. When Dawkin got off, he said, I'll see you tonight. Tonight up on 84th Street, you say Yes, sir. Got the building planted now. Four of my men and four of Lieutenant King's. All they got to do is show up. Well, it's getting kind of late, isn't it? It's almost a quarter to twelve. They'll be here, I think. All right. What do you need from us, Matt? Well, we'd like about eight patrolmen and sergeant, sir. Mm-hmm. Are you anticipating a lot of trouble with them? We want to be ready for it, Captain. I want those boys, Captain. I want to let them go into the building, get in wherever they're going, and start working on the safe. I want a good case against them. We grab them at the front door in the hall before they break into the offices. They'll have to squeeze out of it with unlawful entry. I want them in the act of committing burglary. So we need the street well covered, and we need men on the roof for the adjoining building. All right. You can get the men. Yes, sir. Excuse me. 21st Precinct, Captain Konami. Sergeant Burns, yes, Captain. Is Captain Larkin on the same floor? Yes, he is. One of the detectives is bringing in the office. Oh, all right. Look, see you. Oh, thanks, Captain. Captain Larkin. We'll be turning out the yes, right soon, huh, Captain? Yeah, yeah, in a few minutes. Yeah. Where's Sawyer? Yeah. What? Well, have you ever seen her before? Well, where are they now? Yeah. Yeah, all right. We'll be right over. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. Well, they got there. All three of them, right? Yep. All three of them plus another. A girl. A girl? Mm. Yeah, they drove up in Spizio's car. They parked it down the block. Spriggio, Dawkins, and Mac took the tools and walked down to the building. They left the girl sitting in the car. They went around to the side and started to work on the door to the loading dock. They just got in. What floor did they go to? I don't know yet, Captain. Let's go and find out. Before I left the station house, I told the desk officer, Lieutenant Snyder, to replace Sergeant Burns on telephone switchboard duty. Sergeant Burns was then instructed to select eight men from among those who were reporting for the 12 to 8 tour. He was told to take these men to a point around the corner, out of sight from the loft building, until he received further instructions. Then, with the two detective commanders, I rode to the opposite end of the block, where it had been arranged that we meet Detective Morton Little of the Space and Loft Squad. There he is. Lieutenant King, Captain Kennelly, Detective Little. There he is. Hello. Uh, where's the car that came in, Mort? Across the street here, about 45, 60 feet down the block. Oh, yes. From the two door. Mm-hmm. I don't see the girl in there. Oh, she isn't in there, Captain. As soon as they got inside the building, she left the car and went to the bar and grilled there. She's been sitting in there at the bar ever since. Mm-hmm. Alone? Well, she may think she's alone, sir, but one of the men from the squad here is drinking beer right next to her. Kenny, is that right? Kenny, Dan Kenny. Oh, yeah. How's he got the block planted, Russ? Right? There were four men in cars in front of the building. There's six, Captain. Sawyer and Dick Schreiber drove up two minutes ago there in front of the building. Oh, so good. There's two men on foot close to the loading dock. Two men in the doorway down the street. Are they still there, Mort? Yes. You know what floor they went to? No, sir, not yet. We haven't seen any lights flashed on the building. They might still be working on the floor uh, from the hall to the office up there. Which they lost it in. Can the girl see the front of the building from where she's sitting in the bar? Yes, sir. I guess that's the idea of her going into the bar. She can see everything. Well, uh... What do you say we talk to her, Matt? She can tell us what floor they're heading. All right with me. Captain? Well, you better leave me out of it, Matt. If I walk in there with the uniform on, it'll tip where cops right away. You might not want to do that. Mm, yes, sir, we might not. Lord, you stay here. Yes, sir. Okay, Matt. All right, I'll see you. Yeah. 
You've got a good skipper, this precinct, man. He knows what the score is. Well, he came up to the detective division. Yeah? He was a squad commander before the war. Oh. Now, let's see what we can get out of this girl before we tip over the law. Where the law, huh? Okay. Okay with me. And there's the two men trying to the loading truck one. Yeah. Those boys come out, they won't know what hit them. Don't expect them to come out for a while yet, do you? Not if they have to say. Your man, Kinney, in the bar, he won't tip anything when we walk. Walk in, will he? He won't even know it. Good. Well, we got a string of about 11 safe jobs. I hope this clears. Hope so, too. I just like to be near the door. I've got a phobia about these things. Yeah. Well, the big gentleman. Got any beer on draft? Just some bottles. Okay. What kind? Any kind. Two. Okay, any kind. I, uh, I didn't mean to be a nuisance and put you out, lady. That's right. So I told him I don't care if it's triple time. I don't want to work Saturday. Five days is enough for me. Yes. Yeah. Want to be overtime during the week? Oh, yeah. a second there with me. Uh, miss. Yes? Yes, uh, you're not uh, waiting for anyone, are you? What's it to you? Well, I just figured if you, you've got nothing to do, neither have we. I've got something to do. No harm in asking. Yes, sir. Well, how's this? All right? That's fine. Mm-hmm. 60 hours. Well, uh, how about a little conversation until your something to do shows up? Listen, what do you think I am? Nobody has to be for conversation. I'm busy, I told you. I realize that. If I told you I'm busy, just let me alone. Hey, that kind of stuff don't go in here, fellas. What kind of stuff? If you don't know the lady, don't talk to her. You'll talk to her with a second. Talk to me? Talk to him. Oh. Well, what would you What floor are Eddie Dawson and them on across the street? I don't know. What floor are they on? I don't know anybody across the street. Look, we're not kidding you. Why don't you get us? What floor are they on over there? Uh, listen, uh, let me see that badge again, will you? Yeah, Mister. Real. Go stand over at that end of the bar and be quiet. Yes, sir. I'll be quiet. Where are they? What floor? I don't know what floor. They talk something about printing stuff. That's all I know. There are two printing shops. One on the fifth. One on the seventh. Which one? I don't know. I don't. Who's girl are you, Eddie? Yeah, Eddie. I don't know anything to do with me now, will it? Well, I'll put it this way. Let's say you won't have much time for it. You are listening to 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city. The young woman friend of the safe burglar, Eddie Dawking, identified herself as June Keeshan. She gave her address as 334 Perry Street, Greenwich Village. While acting, Captain Russell Larkin of the Safe and Lost Squad moved her to a booth in the barn grill for further questioning. Lieutenant Matt King, commander of the 21st Squad, instructed Detective Kinney, who had been in the place, to inform me and the safe and lost detective, Mort Little, that the girl was in custody. The detectives and uniformed officers on the job were to move in closer as planned while all the information available was obtained from the girl. All right. Sit down there in the booth. Where? Which side? Either side. Take a picture. Now, you're not going to waste any of our time, are you, June? No, I don't want to waste any time. What are you doing here? Why'd you come along? Because they didn't ask me. He asked you to commit burglary, and you're just doing it? You must like him a lot. I didn't know what he was doing, Mort. Now, look, come off it, will you? You know why they're here, and you know why you're here. You're not, baby. I'm not committing burglary. Am I? What are you getting out of it? I don't know. He didn't promise me anything. What'd you get last time? How'd you know I did it before? I guess. Okay, Russ. Kenny's on his way. Don't get stressed. Good. Then... Did Eddie tell you to wait in the car or in here? In here. Listen, how'd that thing start up? I put a nickel in it. Pull out the plug. Yeah. Why in him? He thought if I was sitting in the car, a copy somebody might pass by and start asking questions. 
fellows in here having a drink, nobody would ask me questions. And you could see the front of the building across the street in the loading dock, couldn't you? Yeah, I could see. You were supposed to watch them, weren't you? Yeah. What were you supposed to do if you saw the cops come up? Nothing. Now, look. I told you to stop kidding around. Had no time to play. What were you supposed to do? I was supposed to sit in the car while they were working on the door. Behind the wheel. If I saw a cop car down the street, I was supposed to turn on the headlights and start the motor. If I saw a cop walking down the street. Yeah? Then what? After they got inside, I was supposed to get out of the car and come in here and sit at the bar and have a drink. And watch the building. And watch the building. The cops. For anything that didn't go right. Somebody going inside, for instance, not cops. What were you supposed to do? Well, well it... fellas, you got your beer sitting there. Want me to bring it over? No, just get over there behind the bar, will you? Hey, whose place of business is this, anyway? Mr. Keenan, we appreciate the favor. Now, yeah. what were you supposed to do, Jim? What was I supposed to do when? If you saw the police coming up to the building. Oh, well... I sure is curious. Yeah. If I saw the cops or somebody, I was supposed to go to the phone booth and call the number. What number? The number Eddie gave me. What number is it? I'll get a fast four nine. All set outside. With you in a minute, more. Yes, sir. You were supposed to call that number and what? I was supposed to call and let it ring two times and hang up, you know, to warn him. And that's the phone number up in the place they're making the safe. Oh, that's a good thing to do. Mort. Yes, sir? They're making one of the printing shops, either the fifth floor or the seventh floor. The number up there is El Dorado 52098. Check it out and see which floor the phone is on, will you? Yes, sir. Right. He's going to be mad. He's going to be awfully mad. No, I wouldn't be surprised. He's going to blame me. He always does. Oh, wouldn't that be just like him? Have they got guns? Have you met me? That's why me. Well, I don't know about the others, but Eddie has, I think. Don't you know? Yeah, he's got one. What kind? A gun, a pistol. Like this one? Yeah, something like that. With the thing that spins around where the bullets go in like that. He always wants me to learn how to shoot it, but I'm scared of guns. I don't like them. Well, what about Mac and the Phil? You don't know whether they have guns? Well, I'm not very well acquainted with them. Eddie is my friend. I wouldn't know if they had guns. They don't go around showing them to me, you know. Yeah, we know. But you don't have to worry about Eddie. All he wanted out of there was the money from the safe. He don't want to hurt anybody. He wouldn't shoot anybody. Not Eddie. No. Take it from me, Joan. There's only one reason a man carries a gun. That's to use it. Burglary, defined as breaking and entering with intention to commit a felony, is one of the most difficult crimes to prove. The big-time burglars, the safe crackers, are so law-wise that a conviction against them is seldom possible unless they are unlucky enough to be caught in the act of committing a crime. They are often caught in the act, but it's seldom due to chance. The Safe Law and Truck Squad, a group of specialists in the detective division of the New York City Police Department, charged with the supervision and investigation of this type of crime, have developed the technique of catching burglars in the act. The girl, June Keesham, already in custody, was taken to the station house. The telephone number was checked, and it turned out to be that of the concern on the seventh floor. Officers were posted on the roofs of the two adjoining buildings, both only four stories high. All doors and exits from the loft building were covered. We waited until 12.30, then 1 o'clock, 1.15. At 1.20 a.m., acting Captain Russell Larkin of the Safe and Loft Squad, Lieutenant Matt King, commander of the 21st Squad, and I held a conference in a doorway across the street from the loft building. Well... What do you think, man? I don't know. Either they're having an awful time getting that safe rip or they spotted the activity on the street. They're not going to come out if they know we're down here waiting for them. Captain? Well, they could be taking this long with the safe, couldn't they, Ross? Huh? Yes, sir, they could. These boys know their business. They wouldn't tackle anything. It'd be too tough to pocket. They want something they can rip fast. Rip it fast and get out. Well, you think we ought to go get them? Yes, sir. I think it's about time we did. Okay. There's no elevator. You gotta walk up. If we turn on the power for the elevator, they'll know we're coming. If they don't know it already. Mm-hmm. If they don't know, there's no sense in telling them that. Agreed. Now, we've got to cover the inside fire stairs. The heroes coming up the main stairs are liable to head down the others. Yeah. We'll detail four men to start at the fire stairs the same time we start at the main stairs. Fire stair doors are locked on the stair side all up and down the building. So are the main stairs. Well, how do we know we're going to be able to get on the seventh floor from the stairs? And that's the way they went up. They give me the door. If they know we're down here, they might have left the seventh floor and gone to some other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Possible, Captain. We'll examine all the locks and try the doors on the way up. Okay. Matt, you lead the detail up the firewell. All right. Well, okay. You take one of my men, one of yours, and two uniformed officers. You'll instruct somebody to open up and let us on the floor the first thing. As soon as we get up. 
Okay. I'll take two of my men, two of yours, Matt, and two patrolmen up the main stairs. What about me, Ross? Do I go with you? Well, sure, Captain, if you want to. I want to. That's the building manager just got here, Captain Larkin. Oh, good. What does he say about the layout? Uh, pretty much as we understand it. Yes, we except the sixth floor. It's unoccupied, all right, but there's a lot of shipping crates on the floor. Okay. Has he got the keys to the doors all up and down on the main stairs? Yes, he's got a master key. Good. Tell him I'll be with him in a minute, huh? Yes, sir, I'll tell him. All right. I guess that's it. Except... Except what? Oh, one of us ought to stay in charge down on the street. Who do you suggest, Ross? Well, I know what's on your mind. If there's any fireworks up there, you don't want the ranking officer to get hit. Well, if there's any fireworks, the ranking officer would look awfully silly waiting down on the street, wouldn't he? I'm sorry, Captain. Forget it. I would have tried the same thing if there were an inspector on the job. And it wouldn't have worked either. The men were given their assignments and told of their duties. At 1.28 a.m., we crossed the street and entered the building via the main door. Lieutenant King and his detail went to the rear and started up the firewell. Acting Captain Larkin, Detectives Mort Little and Richard Schreiber of the Safe and Lost Squad, Detectives James Kinney and Daniel Goldman of the 21st Squad, Patrolman Hanneman, Sergeant Burns, and I started up the main stairs toward the seventh floor. En route, we examined the doors and locks on each floor. The second and third floor doors had not been tampered with. Neither had the fourth. Nor the fifth. With guns drawn, we continued up to the sixth. <coughs> Hold it. Here's 
the other one. He's not going to bother us, Captain. Mm-hmm. There's his gun. Let me get him. All right. Now just stay like that. I got nothing else. All right. Sit on the floor. Against the wall. Yes, sir. Now sit there. Everything okay here, Captain? Yeah. Give Captain Larkin a hand with him. Yes, sir. All right, sit still there. That's Matt King at the fire door. Uh, I'll better let him in. Yes, sir. It'd be a good idea. Now, look, I'm not going to tell you a gap. All right, just a minute. Everything all right, Captain? Yeah, I think we've got a couple of dead burglars, Matt. Oh. All right, come on down this way. Well, I sure wound up on the wrong side of the door, didn't I? Have patience, Matt. You're moving up higher on the captain's list all the time. When you get made, you can be on whichever side of the door you want. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Burns. Beating up a girl? Where? On the street? Between 82nd and... And so it goes, around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh and blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or... The brass ring can catch anyone.